Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and in the previous lecture what we have discussed, we have discussed about uh, the definition of the biotechnology, its potential, its uh, uh, the different milestones through which the, the different techniques have been evolved and that is being used by the humans to exploit the uh, uh, microorganism as well as to improve the crop yields. And uh, in uh, following our discussion, we have also discussed that what are the different types of host which are available for the biotechnology applications. And in that context, we have also discussed about the differences between the prokaryotic cell versus the eukaryotic cell. And, uh, uh, and then we in detail, we have discussed about the structure of a typical prokaryotic cell such as the bacteria. And then we have also, uh, and in that context, we have also discussed about the cell wall of gram positive as well as the gram negative bacteria. And at the end, uh, we have also discussed about the gram staining, which is the staining which is being used to distinguish between the gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So, let us continue our discussion about different types of hosts which are available for the biotechnology applications. So, what are these hosts? As we discussed in the previous lecture, the, we have the prokaryotic host or the yeast, animals, plants and uh, we have already discussed about the uh, minute details of the structure of a prokaryotic uh, cell uh, such as the bacteria. We have also discussed about the cell wall and cell wall of gram positive as well as the gram negative bacteria. So, in the today's class, we are going to discuss about the uh, a typical eukaryotic cell and the different uh, uh, organelles which are present in the eukaryotic cell. If you remember in our previous lecture, we have also discussed the differences between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic uh, cell and one of the major difference between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell is that the uh, eukaryotic cells contains the membrane bound organelles. So, in the eukaryotes, what we have, we have two different types of cells. One is the animal cell, the other one is called is the plant cell and both of these uh, animal or the plant cells are sharing the various similarities as well as the eukaryotic cell is concerned, but they are also having the differences from each other. Uh, so, in a, in a typical animal cell, you have the uh, plasma membrane, you have the Golgi apparatus, you have mitochondria, you have microfilaments, then you have the vacuoles then you have the nucleus, then you have the ribosome, lysosomes, uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum and vesicles. Uh, you also have the well developed nucleus which is actually the characteristic feature of a eukaryotic cell compared to the prokaryotic cell and all these uh, properties of a uh, of an animal cell is also present in the plant cell except that the plant cell also contains the cell wall similar to the bacteria and uh, the, the cell wall of the plant is uh, different from the bacterial cell wall. Uh, apart from that, you, the plant cell also contains the chloroplast which is completely absent in the animal cell. And uh, apart from this, there are also some striking differences between uh, animal as well as the plant cell. Let us see what are these differences. So, these differences are one of the major differences that cell wall. The cell wall is present in the plant cell whereas it is completely absent in the animal cell except there are few exceptions where the animal cell also contains the cell wall. Uh, mostly the plant cells are very large. You might have seen the large leaves and the, uh, the cells which are present in the leaves. Similarly, um, uh, compared to the plant cell, the animal cells are relatively smaller. As I discussed in the previous slide, the chlorophyll which is completely present in the uh, plant cells whereas it is absent in the animal cell. 
the vacuoles the vacuoles are the spaces which are present in the in the in the eukaryotic cell and the vacuoles are very large in the case of plant cell where are they are very small as well as their number is very uh, um, their number is very small uh, mitochondria mitochondria is the energy uh, producing uh, uh, organelle which is present in the eukaryotic cell and this number is very few compared to that the animal cell contains very large number of mitochondria because animal cells are uh, energetically more uh, active and that is how they actually require more energy for their uh, metabolic as well as the other kind of activities. Lysosomes, lysosomes are uh, almost absent in the plant cell whereas the lysosomes are present in the animal cell and they have a very very unique as well as the typical uh, function inside the uh, uh, inside the eukaryotic uh, animal cell glyososomes glyososomes are present in the plant cell but they are absent in the animal cell then the major difference is in the in the way the animal as well as the plant cells are dividing the animal cells are uh, plant cells are dividing by a plate method which we uh, which is uh, different from the animal cell which is actually divided by the uh, uh, constrictions and these constrictions are being mediated by the microtubule. So, let us continue our discussion about the different organelles which are present in the eukaryotic cell and you might have noticed that the uh, bacteria does not contain any membrane bound organelle whereas the eukaryotic cell contains different types of uh, organelles which are membrane bound. So, what is the major advantage of a eukaryotic cell to contain the membrane organelles, uh, mem uh, the ar organelles which contains the uh, membrane around it? Membrane bound organelles always give the advantage of developing a concentration gradient. So, there are multiple advantages of a, uh, a eukaryotic cell to have the membrane bound organelle. You can imagine a situation where the mitochondria is catalyzing a reaction and that reaction product uh, is required in a very high quantity that high if, if the mitochondria has to work without the membrane or uh, membrane around it then it has to do it has it requires a very high uh, concentration of that particular substrate whereas if it is it is a membrane bound organelle a lower a, a very low amount of uh, that particular uh, uh, substrate will develop a high concentration and that high concentration can be uh, can be crucial for driving a particular metabolic reaction. The other point is that the, uh, the, uh, the, the reaction whatever you are doing in one organelle or the other organelle will not going to interfere. The third is you can actually make a very fine balance between the different organelle if they are membrane bound so that they, you, can ex, you, can you can exchange the material uh, very very precisely and in a uh, controlled fashion. And because of that the eukaryotic cells are more advanced compared to the bacterial cell. So, let us continue our discussion about the different organelles present in the typical eukaryotic cell. We will start with the uh, cytosol. So, cytosol is the liquid part which is present in the uh, inside the cell and it contains uh, water, it contains salt, it contains the macromolecules such as protein, lipid and RNA. Uh, it also has an array of microtubules. So, microtubules are the fibers which are running throughout the cytosol to give vesicular structures and these microtubule mediated vesicular structures are having a role uh, in providing the destination to the uh, vesicles which are going from one organelle to another organelle. This means this vesicular uh, transport system is actually uh, similar to just like a roads in our city. So, suppose you want to go from one destination to another destination, you have a typical set of roads which you can use uh, to go from one place to another place. Similarly, uh, the microtubules are also running within the cell and having the similar function. Apart from that, the cytosol is uh, going from one state to another state and one state is called sol state and the other one is called as the gel state and these transitions are always happening inside a eukaryotic cell. It depends on the uh, weather as well. 
that when it is winter the cytosol is uh, going from the sol to gel transitions and as well as it has also a similar it has a implications in controlling the uh, reaction of the biochemical as well as the cellular processes because in one form the cytosol is more liquidified in the other case other other form it is more jelly like so because of this uh, loss of water or the density of the cytosol it actually can control the biochemical as well as the cellular processes so what is the function of cytosol the function of cytosol is not very very well defined because it is a liquid which actually is present inside the cell but it also as, as, as I said, it serves as a medium to exchange the material between the different organelles. So, if one organelle, for example, if the mitochondria want to send some molecule to the lysosomes or to endoplasmic reticulum, then it will it be mediated through the cytosol. Uh, it plays a various role, it plays a role in uh, various cellular processes, for example, signal transductions translation. So, the RNA which is present in the cytosol is being translated by the uh, translational machinery which is in the cytosol. Uh, similarly, the signal transactions as you know the cells contain different types of receptors for example, the insulin receptors. So, once the insulin binds to these receptors, uh, the insulin receptor is driving a signaling cascades and that case signaling cascades uh, give the message to the uh, different cellular organelles uh, to, uh, to change its uh, metabolic reactions and as a result we are actually go, uh, regulating the glucose as well as the lipid metabolism. Uh, one question which is very very interesting is that what is the difference between the cytosol versus the cytoplasm. So, the cytosol is actually the water part, cytosol is the water. Whereas, the cytoplasm is the cytosol as well as the other organelles. So, whatever you have inside the cell uh, is called as cytoplasm if you remove the nucleus. So, if you remove the nucleus, the remaining whatever is there inside the cell is, cons is called as cytoplasm. Whereas, the cytosol is the water part or the liquid part which is filled inside the cell. So, cytosol does not contain the, is does not uh, mean the uh, the organelles whereas the cytoplasm is the liquid part as well as the different organelle except the nucleus. Now, we will go move on to the next organelle and that is the nucleus. So, nucleus is considered to be the central processing unit as you might know that in a computer the central processing unit what is the role of central processing unit is to control the different types of metabolic as well as the biological processes within the cell. So, the nucleus has the similar function and how it is happening because the nucleus contain our genetic material. The nucleus contain the genetic material which is called as chromatin. This chromatin is present in the two form one is called heterochromatin the other one is called as the euchromatin. So, heterochromatin is the condensed uh, genome or the genome which is uh, transcriptively very inactive whereas, the euchromatin is loose uh, genome or the genome where the, uh, the, uh, the genes and the other uh, parts are accessible to the machinery and as a, as a result the euchromatin is the region which is uh, transcriptively very active. Apart from that you have the nucleoplasm which this nucleoplasm is the li liquid part which is present inside the nucleus. The nucleoplas uh, nucleoplasm contains the nucleotides, DNA polymerase and other enzymes as well as it contains the transcription factors and they all are going to work in modulating the transcriptional activity within the nucleus. Apart from that you have the ribosomes which are present on the outer surface of the uh, nucleus and then the uh, nucleus also contains a nuclear pore. The nuclear pore is very important in terms of regulating the ex material within the nucleus or outside the nucleus. So, the nuclear pore is a very very controlled pore which actually regulates the exchange of material between the nucleus as well as the cytosol. It has a very very complex structures. So, and apart from that 
you have the nuclear envelope which contains the inner membrane so its nuclear envelope is a double membrane structure which is a inner membrane as well as the outer membrane and a nuclear pore which actually regulates the exchange of material between the nucleus to the other part of the cell uh, in a typical nuclear pore uh, is uh, having the uh, outer membrane as well as the inner membrane and then uh, inside that you have the genomic content uh, and then you have a uh, nuclear pore complex this nuclear pore complex is actually regulating the uh, exchange of material from the nucleus to the external uh, to, uh, to other part of the cell and uh, if it is very selective it can allow even the uh, entry or the exit of the RNA as well as the other um, bigger proteinaceous uh, molecules it can allow the uh, entry and exit of different types of transcription factors and so on but all these is very selective in the case of within the cell what is the function of a nucleus as i said nucleus is the central processing unit of a cell and you know all that what is the role of a cpu or the central processing unit in a computer so what is the role of a central processing unit of a computer is that it actually uh, going to regulate and monitor all the metabolic as well as the cellular processes uh, happening in the cell and uh, it actually governs that simply by modulating the transcriptional as well as the translational activities within the cell and that is all done by the signal which the cell is receiving from the external stimuli. So, uh, when you have an external stimuli for example, we have already taken an example of insulin. If the insulin is binding to the insulin receptor that actually drives a signal transduction and that actually eventually ends up into the diff a set of transcription factors. This transcription factor goes and bind to the their respective genes inside the nucleus and that is how they actually increases the transcription of those particular genes and that in turn changes the different types of proteins which are present in the cell and that uh, in turn actually regulates the carbohydrate as well as the other metabolic reactions within the cell. That is how the insulin is actually uh, controlling the different metabolic reactions in the cell but it is all being mediated through the nucleus or with the help of the nucleus. In the other word uh, you can also think about that if you go in sun and you are actually having very hot weather then in that case the, the other kind of stimuli or other kind of receptor is going to give the signal to the nucleus and accordingly the nucleus is going to produce different types of protein which is being mediated uh, through the transcriptionally uh, modulating the different set of genes. Now let us continue to the next organelle and the next organelle is the mitochondria. The mitochondria is considered to be the powerhouse of the cell and what is the function of a powerhouse of a cell? The powerhouse in our city is required to generate the electricity whereas similarly the mitochondria is the powerhouse in the cell and its function is to generate the electricity which is actually in the case of cell it is the ATP. Uh, ATP is actually the currency or the uh, energy equivalents which are required for running the different biochemical as well as the other metabolic activities within the cell. A mitochondria is a very very complex structure it contains a outer membrane and a inner membrane. The inner membrane is folded in the form of a uh, cristi or on this cristi you have the uh, on, the, in, on this Christi you have the uh, uh, so you have the Christi and the in this Christi you have the ATP synthase which is actually the enzyme which is required for ATP synthesis and the ultimate uh, electron transport component is called as the ATP synthase and that ATP synthase is important for generating the ATP. You can see that there is a this is the ATP synthase where you have the two subunit one is called uh, FO1 and the other one is called F1 subunit these two subunits are coming together to, to make the ATP synthase 
and ATP synthase is utilizing the hydrogen potential and that hydrogen potential when it is uh, running through the ATP synthase molecule is generating the ATP. So, it is combining the ADP plus, plus phosphorus to generate the ATP. This ATP is then available for the cell to utilize it for the different metabolic reactions. Uh, in a typical uh, uh, in a typical ATP synthase you have the uh, you as I said you have the two subunits one is called FO another one is called F1 unit and the FO unit is consist of three different proteins which is called A, B and C uh, and the FO subunit is a membrane bound subunit whereas the F1 particle is the uh, present in the inside the matrix and that also contains different types of proteins. So, it contains uh, the alpha, beta, gamma and all these alpha, beta, gamma proteins are having its exclusive functions and with the help of the proton gradient, the ATP synthase is rotating. So, with the help of this proton gradient uh, potential, the ATP synthase is rotating and as a result, it is actually combining the ADP and PI to synthesize the ATP. Let us see how it happened. So, ATP synthase is a membrane bound enzyme or enzyme complex. It mostly has two subunits or two components. It is called the component number 1 or A is called as FO and the component number B is called the F1. The FO is the membrane bound component and F1 is the actual enzyme which is catalyzing the combination of ADP plus PI to synthesize the ATP and that is not the membrane bound that is in the free into the into the lumen. So, in the FO1 uh, subunit that is made up of, of three different proteins known as the A, B and C whereas, the F1 subunit is made up of different types of proteins and these proteins are called as the alpha protein, beta protein. So, alpha, beta, gamma delta and epsilon ok. So, there are three units of alpha, three units of beta, one unit of gamma and one unit of delta and epsilon and if you see the arrangement of the, uh, the ATP synthase, it is like this. So, this portion is the F4 subunit. Then after that it has a ball like structure and this is the F1 subunit ok and within this ball what you have is so this is the C protein ok. Then you have B and the this is called A of FO subunit ok. Whereas, in the case of the uh, F1 particle or F1 subunit, you have the uh, alpha, you have the beta and that alpha and beta actually uh, alternate with each other to make this uh, ball like structure. Then they have a gamma in between. So, this is the gamma and and they uh, apart from this they also have the epsilon. So, this is the uh, structure which is responsible for converting the ADP plus PI to ATP. So, let us see how this happens ok. So, if I show you the structure uh, uh, the working structure of the ATP synthase. Uh, so, ADP synthase uh, as I said you know uh, has the alpha, beta and gamma subunits and these are actually the subunit which are actively participating into the catalytic mechanisms. So, 
in the catalytic mechanism what we have is the so we have alpha beta alpha beta alpha beta okay alpha beta so we have alternate arrangement of alpha beta and in the middle we have the gamma okay so this is the the uh, the middle balloon like structure what you have seen earlier okay and this i show you the beta subunit so beta subunit has three catalytic site okay or three or its catalytic site can be modulated in three different ways so it can actually be modulated by the conformational changes induced by the gamma chain so it has three different types of conformational changes one is called open conformation the other one is called loose conformation and tight conformation so what happen is that the open conformation or the open site is actually the active site when it can receive the substrates so it is open site actually uh, gets the initially adp and pi so they come and bind to this site and then there is a conformational changes in the beta subunit because of the movement of the gamma chain and as a result the adp and pi goes and bind to the loose binding site okay as soon as they bind to the loose binding site the uh, gamma uh, subunit also again uh, induces the conformational changes and as a result these two molecules comes and bind here in a tight conformation and once they bind in a tight conformation the coupling reaction take place between the adp and pi and as a result they both get combined and it generates the atp so uh, in the tight conformation the adp and pi actually get combined to each other and generates the atp as soon as the atp is generated again the gamma chain is inducing a conformational changes and because of that the atp which is bound very tightly in the tight conformation the active site gets changes its conformation as a as a result the atp is comes out because the active site conformation is now in the open conformation and because of that atp is released and the new molecule or the new series of adp and pi comes in so this cycle continues for several round and as a result it actually assimilates the proton energy which is being used to couple the adp and pi to generate the atp now the question comes how actually this is happening so how it is happening is that as i said you know you have the membrane bound complex okay and on the this side you have large quantity of h plus okay so because the h plus has the has a potential and this potential energy can be utilized by this enzymatic machinery to generate a mechanical force and because of that mechanical force it actually can induce the conformational changes within the beta subunit and that actually allows the enzyme to couple the adp and pi to generate the atp you can easily see uh, this same phenomena in a more schematic animation this animation is been provided to us by the professor walker professor walker is a renowned professor in the mrc uk uh, what you can see here is the complete the atp synthesis and what you can see is actually a rotating rod actually so this rotating rod what you see the uh, pink color is actually the c chain of the fo particle so c chain is actually in the which is actually integrated within the membrane and that rotates keep rotating and uh, because it's rotates and the gamma chain is attached to or uh, is uh, is in in uh, attached in in coordinates with the this uh, particular c chain so as the c chain in runs it also induces the conformational changes in the gamma chain what that is what you see in here as a cyan color or yellow blue color uh, uh, protein 
and the top portion what you see is the uh, yellow and the uh, uh, red color uh, proteins are actually the alternate arrangement of the alpha and beta subunit. So, in totality in the ATP synthase what you see is actually the C chain uh, C protein of the FO1 particle which is integrated within the plasma membrane and that is rotating because of its rotation it induces the conformational changes in the gamma chain which is which you see in the blue color and that conformational changes is also being directed towards the uh, alpha and beta chain. So, what happen is once the proton comes out from this uh, ATP synthase it the because the proton has a potential energy it uh, once it runs through this uh, particular protein complex, it gives a kind of the uh, uh, mechanical energy into the uh, C protein and that C pro that allows the C protein to keep rotating in the membrane and as a result, it actually gives the conformational changes throughout the molecule and these kind of conformational changes are being used. So, now what you see is actually the uh, the three different conformation of the beta chain. So, what you see now is actually the, so what you see now is the, uh, is the uh, open conformation and in the open conformation the molecule, the, uh, the molecules are not binding. Okay? Uh, so, the, so, the active site is relaxed and it can actually bind the ADP and PI. As soon as it happens, you can see that the blue is actually uh, uh, making a conformational changes and because of that, the beta subunit is turning its active site into first into the loose binding site and then again into the tight binding conformations and because of that, it actually coupling the ADP and PI and generating the ATP. As soon as the ATP is formed, the active site is getting turn converted into the uh, the loose uh, into the open conformation and as soon as it uh, uh, get open into the open conformation, it gets, uh, uh, it releases the uh, ATP from the active site. Okay, so let us continue. Uh, what are the functions of mitochondria? So, function of mitochondria as we said, function of the for foremost function of the mitochondria is to play the role in the production of ATP. Then the mitochondria is a site which actually is important for generating the free radicals and these free radicals or the reactive aspiration species are known in the immune cells to kill the infectious organism. So, what happen is when somebody is getting the infection, the uh, it actually generates the uh, signal transactions and that signal transactions within the immune cells, they ask the mitochondria to increase its free radical generation capacity and because of that these free radicals are being released outside the cell and uh, these free radicals are very very uh, toxic. So, they will be going to kill all the microorganisms. Similarly, the mitochondria is the only organelle which is being used to tree track the uh, family tree of any humans or the any animal. Why it is so? Because the mitochondria is the only uh, organelle which remains within the ovum of a particular human being or so during the fertilization what happen is that you have the ovum and then you have the sperm. Why after the fertilization the mitochondria which is present inside the sperm is being lost because the only the nucleus part is going inside the uh, ovum whereas the ovum contains the mitochondria and that mitochondria continues from one generation to many generation and because of that if you follow the mitochondria you can be able to track the family tree. The mitochondria is also having a role in programmed cell death or the apoptosis. So, apoptosis is a programmed cell death, it is actually having the different cascades in which the cell is undergoing the death and this is actually a controlled process. So, it does not create any kind of damage to the organisms and one of the classical example is the development of a hand or the pentadactyly feature in a human being. You might have observed that in a frog 
what you have is uh, a, a, a hand like this where the, uh, the uh, fingers are connected to each other by a membrane whereas in the case of humans what you have is a typical pentadactyly um, hand. So, the, the region uh, among these uh, fingers are being dead by a process known as apoptosis or the programmed cell death. So, the in the in the case of apoptosis uh, the mitochondria is actually releasing the cytochrome C. So, cytochrome C is inducing the uh, different types of reactions within the cell and that actually is going to kill the cells. So, mitochondria is controlling the apoptosis in the cell. Uh, the, in an adverse event of exposure of the cell to the cytotoxic agent or environmental condition, it activates cell surface signaling to activate cytosolic caspases. Ultimately, the cellular event activates DNases. So, these DNases are going to degrade the DNA which is present in the nucleus and once the genomic DNA is being degraded inside the nucleus, it eventually leads to the death of particular cell. Now, move on to the next organelle and the next organelle is chloroplast. Chloroplast is only present in plant. So, it is completely absent in animal cell and the chloroplast as is the, the anatomically or the structure wise the chloroplast is very close or very similar to the mitochondria. It has the double membrane, when is the outer membrane, the other one is the inner membrane. And the inner membrane is folded uh, in, in the form of membrane, is folded in the form of thylakoids. These thylakoids are uh, arranged to each other to form the granum. So, you can imagine that this is the granum part and the thylakoid membranes are uh, arranged in a, in a coin like structure and that is called as the granum. These gran granum contains the different types of uh, photoreceptors such as the photoreceptor 1 and photoreceptor 2. As you know that the chloroplast is using the potential energy or the it is using the ATP as well as the sunlight uh, to synthesize the food and that is happening within the stroma part. So, in the stroma you are we uh, the chloroplast it is running the dark reaction whereas the thylakoid membrane region is been used for the light reactions and light reaction uh, is being used to produce the ATP. Similar to mitochondria, the uh, chloroplast al also contain the ATP synthase complexes and that actually utilizes the light reactions to generate the electromotive forces and then these light electromotive forces are again being used by the ATP synthase to generate the ATP as well as the uh, NADPH. And the both this NADPH as well as the ATP is being used in the dark reaction to synthesize the uh, sugar with the help of taking the sunlight as well as the carbon, carbon dioxide from the environment. Uh, so, in the typical photosynthesis you have carbon dioxide, water, then the sunlight and what you produce is the uh, sugar molecule or the glucose molecule. This sugar is eventually being a food for the plant as well as the animal. So, this food is being used by the plant for its own running its own metabolism as well as the same food can be used by the animal for their own nutrition. So, this is a typical uh, the uh, photosynth uh, photosynthetic reactions which are happening inside the uh, inside the chloroplast and that actually is generating the uh, proton gradient and that proton gradient is being utilized by the ATP synthase to generate the ATP as well as the NADPH and that NADPH and ATP is being used in the dark reaction which is given on the top to generate the food. Now, we move on to the next organelle that is called endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is also called uh, is also 
uh, be a part of vesicular trafficking, uh, which means endoplasmic reticulum is uh, working similar to the roads. So, endoplasmic reticulum job is to distribute the uh, substances or the material between the different organelles of the cell and it is done by simply by uh, endoplasmic reticulum in connection uh, with the help of the Golgi bodies as well as the lysosomes. So, the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies and the lysosomes are both are coming together to form the vesicular trafficking system and how it is happening is that in the in the in the in the rough endoplasmic reticulum so you have two different types of endo, uh, endoplasmic reticulum one is called rough endoplasmic reticulum the other one is called as smooth endoplasmic reticulum in the rough endoplasmic reticulum you have the ribosomes which are being attached onto the uh, ribosome uh, onto the endoplasmic reticulum whereas the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not contain any of the ribosomes so, these ribosomes are synthesizing the protein by the translation and once these proteins are being synthesized inside the reti uh, endoplasmic reticulum, they are being processed and then they are being sent to the Golgi bodies and then these Golgi bodies are uh, processing these uh, protein containing vesicles and tagging them for to their destinations. For example, if, if a, a vesicle has to be exocytosed or it is a secretory substances, then the vesicle will not have any tag and as a result what will happen is the vesicle will fuse to the plasma membrane and it will release its content in the outside the world. You can imagine that this is what happened when there is a uh, when we would like to secrete the antibodies in the uh, external uh, media by the immune cells. Uh, similarly, if there are uh, substances which need to be go to the mitochondria, the Golgi bodies will receive those proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum, they will process it, tag it with the mitochondrial localizing sequences and that is how the those vesicles will go to the mitochondria. Uh, what is the function of endoplasmic reticulum? So, the function of endoplasmic reticulum is very simple. Uh, in the case of smooth endoplasmic reticulum that is required for the synthesis of steroid hormones in the, uh, in the gonad cells, endoplasmic reticulum is also a site for detoxification of different metabolites which are being produced inside the cell. Endoplasmic reticulum is the major site for calcium requestation. This calcium is being released. Uh, in the event of any signal transduction and that released calcium is uh, causing the change in shape of the cell. Or it can also uh, allow the cells to make the movement uh, towards a particular uh, chemoattractant. Uh, Endoplasmic reticulum is also having a role in synthesis of protein, phospholipid as well as the carbohydrate and the major role what we the endoplasmic reticulum is in the protein sorting to different organelle and that is uh, we, is being done with the help of the Golgi bodies uh, which actually is receiving these substances from the endoplasmic reticulum and then processing and tagging it with the different organelles to, uh, to, to for the different organelles. Uh, and then lastly, the endoplasmic reticulum is also been involved in the glycosylation of different proteins. So, this glycosylation pattern which the endoplasmic reticulum is tagging to every protein is deciding their destinations and this glycosylation is also protecting the cell or protecting the uh, protein for uh, the uh, proteolytic degradations and sometimes this uh, glycosylation pattern is also deciding the fate of these proteins or the destination of these proteins within the cell. Let us move on to the next organelle. Uh, the next organelle is the Golgi bodies. So, Golgi bodies is also a part of the vesicular trafficking system. The Golgi bodies is a uh, membranous organelle where whereas you have the cyst, 
you have two region one is called cis uh, cis golgi as well as the other one is called as the trans golgi this cis golgi is facing towards the er and it receives the substances from the er then within these uh, within these membranous structures the protein is being processed and then those processed protein is been released from the trans golgi part in the form of a vesicle these vesicles are containing the tag uh, for the organelles which they want to uh, be in uh, the destination which is been the destination for example if this this these vesicles are being tagged for mitochondria then uh, they will be uh, they will be tagged with the mitochondrial localization sequences and they will be uh, uh, go to the mitochondria and supply that particular protein to the mitochondria so what is the function of golgi bodies the function of golgi bodies is in the place of protein sorting which means it receives the protein from the endoplasmic reticulum then it sorts those proteins for its different organelles uh, it may receiving a protein which is for the lysosomes it may be receiving a protein which is for mitochondria it may be receiving a protein which is for the nucleus and so on so that sorting part is been done by the uh, golgi bodies and then it actually tags those vesicles with a particular uh, localizing sequences for a uh, for a destination and that's how it actually helps in vesicular trafficking uh, golgi bodies are also playing role in protein modification or the glycosylation and the ultimately it is also playing a role in proteolysis or the degradation of the proteins let's move on to the next organelle and the next organelle is known as the lysosomes lysosomes are popularly known as societal bags which means the lysosomes are containing the substances which are very very harmful for the cell and these substances are if they will be spilled over within the cell it actually induces the suicide of that particular cell lysosome is been discovered by the scientist d duve and they are popularly known as the suicidal bags due to their role in autophagy so you might have uh, read about the autophagy autophagy means eating yourself which means uh, in a particular condition when the cell does not have the energy to run its metabolic reaction it actually goes undergoes in the process of autophagy and in the process of autophagy what happen is the lysosomes are actually releasing its content within the cell and that actually start degrading the different types of organelles and that uh, de by degradation of different organelles it produces some amount of biomolecule as well as some amount of energy and that actually allows the cell to sustain for longer period of time and that happens if you keep a cell under starvation and that is required for meeting the energy requirements uh, so as you can see lysosomes are the double walled membranous structures it is containing the glycosylated proteins on the surface and the membrane of or the lumen of the lysosome contains hydrolytic enzymes it contains its ph is very low and it is actually a uh, it contains the cytolytic enzymes proteases and the purpose of these uh, substances is to degrade the ingested material which means what is the function of lysosomes the function of lysosome is the degradation of ingested food material for delivery through vesicular system which means if you are if the organism is taking a food material for example if uh, amoeba or if some organelle is taking a food material once the food material enters inside the cell it is actually of very large in size so this food material has to be disintegrated into individual biomolecules that is the function of the lysosomes which means the lysosome will take up this food material and with the help of its proteases and cytolytic enzyme it actually going to disintegrate or um, uh, di divide these material into the smaller particles and these smaller particles are good enough for uh, 
the cell to use for nutrition. On the other hand, it actually degrades the pathogenic bacteria. Similar to the uh, food particles, if a cell has taken up the bacteria, so bacteria is also made up of, of biomolecules. So, once the uh, bacteria, uh, once the immune cells catches up any bacteria and they are being taken up all the this bacteria, this bacteria is being in, encapsulated in a double membrane structure. These are called phagosomes. These phagosomes then deliver the bacteria to the lysosomes and with the help of the proteolytic enzyme as well as the cytolytic enzymes, this uh, bacteria is being digested and as a result what will happen? The bacteria will going to form the peptides. So, bacteria will be digested to a level where the individual peptides chain of the bacteria is being developed and these peptides are being displayed along with the MSC molecules to give the signal to the other immune cells for about the infection and that is how it is actually going to help in generating the robust immune response within the host. The lysosome is also required to, to degrade the older protein. So, if a protein is aged and it is required to be older, uh, it is required to be degraded, then this protein is also being delivered to the lysosomes for its degradation. Because once you degrade this particular protein and you generate the amino acids, then these amino acids can be used by the cell for the synthesis of other biomolecules. Uh, what we were discussing, we were discussing about the lysosomes. So, lysosomes as we, as we discussed, it is they are called as the societal bags and their job is to, uh, uh, to provide the, uh, to degrade or to destroy the uh, ingested bacteria as well as the uh, digest the uh, proteinaceous substance or aged proteins. Uh, so, let us uh, discuss further and uh, now what we are going to discuss is the most important organelle which actually defines a particular cell. So, this particular uh, um, uh, cellular organelle is not been considered as an organelle, but uh, it, is, it is the most important, uh, 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 it, it is the most important uh, 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 organelle present in the cell and these, these, this particular organelle is known as the plasma membrane. So, the plasma membrane is actually the, the uh, only uh, boundary and plasma membrane actually defines the boundary uh, which actually separates the living cell from the non-living uh, uh, non-living surroundings. So, uh, in plasma membrane what you have is you have the uh, lipid molecules as well as the proteins and the lipids are arranged in two layers one this uh, and that is called as the bilayer and why they are uh, uh, arranged in two layer because the uh, because the phospholipids which are making the plasma membrane has a unique uh, feature what you have is the uh, uh, is the uh, uh, in, a, in a typical uh, uh, phospholipids, what you have is a head on the top and then you have the tails. This head is polar which means it is going to be a charged molecule uh, whereas the tail is non-polar which means it this particular portion is not going to like the water which means the head is always directed towards the water or the aqueous environment, uh, whereas the non-polar tail is going to be directed towards the non-polar interaction. That is why the two phospholipids are arranged uh, from tail to tail and head to head. Because of that, you have the uh, bilayer present in the plasma membrane and this among within this bilayer sandwich, you are going to have the different types of protein. Uh, some proteins are the integral proteins which are present throughout the depth of the plasma membrane whereas some proteins are the peripheral proteins such as uh, peripheral protein like uh, uh, 
either they will be present on the inner leaflet or they will be present on the outer surface. So apart from these proteins, the plasma membrane also contains the receptors. Uh, these receptors of are is also of different types and then they also contains different types of glycoproteins, transporters and the, uh, the receptors and the classical uh, model which explains the arrangement of lipid and protein in a plasma membrane is called as the fluid mosaic model. In according to this fluid mosaic model, the lipid molecules are making a fluid like situation and because the lipid molecules can rotate or move within the plasma membrane, the, uh, the, uh, the plasma membrane is uh, dynamic in nature, it can change uh, the position of the proteins as well as the position of different lipids which are present in the plasma membrane. So apart from the phospholipid, the plasma membrane also contains the cholesterol, the sphingocytes and as well as the other kinds of uh, non-polar lipids and the composition of these lipids can, can be modulated under different uh, environmental conditions in such a way so that it protects the, uh, the cells from the different types of uh, uh, environmental as well as other kind of uh, damages. Uh, so let us see what is the function of plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane as we said is containing different types of proteins. These proteins are falling in five different categories. One is called transporters. So the transporters job is to uh, transport the specific uh, analyte across the plasma membrane. It could be uh, an analyte, it could be for the sodium potassium or it could be for the different types of uh, nutritious substance such as the glucose or other uh, food particles. Uh, then we have the receptors. These receptors are, uh, there are two classes of receptor. One the receptor which is actually uh, helping the cell to take up the food molecules uh, from the invar uh, from the external extracellular media. Uh, one of the classical example is the LDL receptor. The LDL receptor is responsible for the uptake of the lipid known as the LDL and this uh, receptor is uh, present on the plasma membrane and it getting recircularized. Uh, what, the, what is the LDL receptor is doing? It is catching the LDL which is present in the micro environment and then putting this LDL into the cell and once this is done then the LDL receptor returning back to the plasma membrane and this cycle continues for several rounds and that is how the cell will take up the LDL which is present in the extracellular media. Apart from the receptors which are important for uptake of the food particles, you also have the receptors which are doing the signal transductions or which are relaying the signal which is present on the extra, which is being exerted from the extracellular uh, agonist molecules. One of the such classical example is the insulin receptor which is, uh, which is working when the insulin is present outside and uh, when the insulin is present outside, uh, it binds to the insulin receptor and that is how it actually drives the uh, a series of uh, phosphorylation cascades and that actually changes the gene expression profiling from the nucleus and that in turn uh, changes the uh, cellular metabolism for the carbohydrate as well as the lipids. Apart from these two classes, you also have the different types of membrane bound enzyme. One of the classical example is adenylate cyclase. And this also functions while it is on the present on the plasma membrane. Apart from these, these enzymes, you also have the uh, electron transport chain which is also present on the plasma membrane of the, um, of the mitochondria. And you also might have seen that uh, the, uh, the photosystem 1 or photosystem 2, those are also the, uh, the membrane protein which are present on the thylakoid membrane. The thylakoid membranes are also made up of plasma, uh, is also of the same composition as the plasma membrane. And apart from these, uh, uh, the protein which are present on the plasma membrane, you, the, the, the function of the plasma membrane is to provide the protection. So plasma membrane is actually uh, 
making a boundary which actually separates the cells cellular content from the extracellular media and because of this uh, important role the plasma membrane protects the internal cellular organelles from getting the from from getting the damage by uh, providing a uh, a support or cushion you can imagine a situation where the cell is eating up the food particles and expanding in those cases the plasma membrane will grow and that's how the it will not allow the uh, cells to bust actually vice versa there is a when there is a loss of water then also the plasma membrane will try to uh, uh, overcome these losses and try to protect the cell from these kind of damages communications the plasma membrane also contains different types of um, receptor or different types of ligand molecules one of the classical example is the catherine uh, molecules or the integrin molecules and all these molecules are uh, they are the cell is using for communication purposes in some cases the cell is directly uh, 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 coming in contact with the other cell and relaying the signal in other cases the plasma membrane is secreting the molecules which are actually going to the other other cell and giving the signal uh, then the most important part is the plasma membrane is the selective uptake of substances in or out which means the plasma membrane is a selective semi permeable plasma mem uh, semi permeable membrane which means it does not allow anything which is coming inside passively uh, uh, so you can imagine a situation if uh, you have a bacteria or infectious organism or the toxic substance outside the cell the plasma membrane may not allow these substances to come inside and because of that uh, the uh, plasma membrane protects the inner machinery from getting the damages then the plasma membrane because it contains different types of receptors it responds to the changes in the microenvironment for example if there is a change in the uh, ph if there is a change in food uh, substance or presence of food all these changes are going to be responded by the plasma membrane because it also contains the receptors with uh, uh, on the cell surface and this receptor will respond to the uh, change environment and then the lastly uh, the plasma membrane also allows the cell for uh, making it re recognized for example the different types of cells have the different types of uh, uh, ligands or the receptor present on their surface and these ligands are specific for that particular cell type and uh, uh, this is very common in terms of immune cells because the immune cells are containing different types of cd molecules and these cd molecules are characteristic to a particular cell type and because of the presence of these particular uh, 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 molecules these cells could be recognized as uh, recognized by the system or by the body uh, so that's why the plasma membrane which is actually making the boundary of a cell is playing a very very crucial role in uh, in maintaining the cell in cellular integrity as well as in maintaining the uh, it is providing different it is uh, doing the different types of functions in cell so in totality and in summary what we have discussed so far what we have discussed about the different organelles present in the eukaryotic cells and uh, uh, and what we have discussed about the different the function of function as well as the structure of these organelles and how these organelles uh, what is the advantage of eukaryotic cell to have the um, plasma mem membrane bound organelles uh, and uh, now in the subsequent lecture what we are going to discuss is how to separate these organelles and how to uh, uh, how to uh, uh, isolate a individual organelle so that you could be able to make the recovery of a product which is been produced inside a particular organelle so for the protein production point of view it could be done in a in a in a different way as for as far as the uh, prokaryotes or the eukaryote cells are present so there are different sites where the protein can be produced inside a proteolytic cell as well as in a eukaryotic cell that's why it is important for us to to isolate that particular cellular fraction and 
so that we could be able to uh, make the purification easier as well as the downstream processing would be easier and at the end that may help us to make the recovery uh, uh, make make the better recovery of the product uh, from these host cells which are over expressing uh, your protein or the uh, sub product what you are trying to develop thank you